Welcome to my lecture online. Here we're starting a new chapter in statistics. And yes, this one topic, this one concept deserves to take an entire chapter. Matter of fact, there'll probably be some additional chapters to talk about some additional features of this particular concept. The concept is called the normal probability distribution. So what's so special about the normal probability distribution and what is it? So let's introduce ourselves to what it actually is. So first of all, let's think about the words probability distribution. We need a curve that represents a distribution of probabilities. So when we take a look at this curve right here in the dotted line, which is recreated over here on the left, notice that it has kind of an interesting curve to it. It's called the normal curve or the bell-shaped curve. It essentially kind of looks like a bell shape, so that's where that term comes from. And notice that if I were to draw a line straight down from the middle on down, here where we reach the peak, if you then take this and you fold it over, the right side of the curve looks exactly the same as the left side of the curve. So that feature alone makes it the normal probability distribution. So the fact that the both sides of the curve looks the same, that makes it a normal probability distribution. But then again, what is the probability distribution? Well, it's a curve that represents probabilities. The higher the curve, the greater the probability, the lower the curve, the smaller the probability. So if you just simply look at the numbers at the bottom, and let's not read yet what's up there, see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 10, notice the highest probability occurs when the number is 5, the lowest when it's 0, or when it's 10. You can see that the probability increases as the numbers increase from 0 to 5, and then decreases when the numbers go from 5 to 10. And since both sides of the curve look the same, it's a normal distribution of probabilities. The highest probability in the, in the middle, the lowest probability off on the sides. All right, now, what does this curve represent? Well, given the random variable x, so you have to have a random variable. You're going to pull something, or you're going to try something, you're going to test something, do some experiment, and the results can be completely random. All right, then we have a variable x, that represents that random number, that random variable, and in this case, it represents the number of baskets made from the free throw line. So we're going, to back, we're going back to basketball, and let's say that the people participating get 10 tries, 10 attempts to make a basket. And we're going to ask 100 high school students to participate, and presumably most of those students have played some basketball, at least have tried to shoot some baskets on the free throw line, and so they should be relatively successful in making some of those shots. Here you can see that, again, the numbers from 0 to 10 is the number of baskets made, and x being the random variable represents Hmm, yes, the number of students that have made a certain number of baskets. So in this case, we have one student that made zero baskets, four that made one basket, seven that made two, 11 that made three, 15 that made four, 20 that made five, and then it starts decreasing again, 17 that made six, 12 that made seven, eight that made eight, four that made nine, and one that made 10 baskets. So the most likely case is that a student trying 10 times to make a basket, that the student will make five baskets. Four baskets or six ba baskets are not as likely, and then a smaller number of baskets or a greater number of baskets, the probability then drops off and eventually gets down to close to zero. So you can see that particular curve where we have this increase, faster increase, slower increase, maximum probability, decrease, faster decrease, slower decrease, and eventually kind of goes off to zero probability, obviously. There's zero probability you'll make 11 baskets if you only get 10 tries. And yes, you cannot make negative baskets, so that probability is, of course, zero. So that's what we mean by a normal probability distribution. So you may ask, well, what's so important about that? Well, it is applied to many, many, many different aspects of science, industry, you name it. We use this all the time for all kinds of different reasons. And so therefore, it's important that we get used to seeing that, understanding what it is, and know how to utilize it to our benefit. So that's what we're going to do in this chapter. We're going to look at 
all the various aspects of what a normal probability distribution is, how to calculate it, how to calculate a certain probability. For example, you may want to know what the probability is that students will score six, seven, or eight baskets, or that students will score three baskets. How do you predict that? How do you predict the range of baskets scored? That kind of thing. And all that can be done using the normal probability distribution. So if you're interested, stay tuned, and we'll have some more videos on the topic.